9 Eastern. This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. My next guest, a complete mystery to me, but thankfully, our producers have given me a few hints. The seed for her business idea was planted in a tiny one-bedroom apartment, but now her entrepreneurial spirit is in full bloom and can be seen in some of Manhattan's swankiest buildings. All right, let's bring out our mystery guest. We're talking about blooms and planting seeds. I dare say this has something to do with plants. Please have a seat. Nice Hi. to have you with us on Taking Stock. Hi. So am I close? It has something to do with plants because we're talking about blooming seeds and taking root. Uh, are you involved somehow in the plant industry or the yes. flower business? Yes. You are. Are you uh, a floral, you own a floral shop or do you own a flower uh, distributing business? No. No. Are you um, a, a landscape architect? No. No. Uh, but you're in the plant business. <laughs> yes. Do you buy and sell plants? Uh, yes. You do. Are you a plant broker? Is there such a thing? <laughs> There, there is such a thing, but I'm not a plant broker. There, you're not a plant broker. So you, you buy plants and you put together uh, landscapes or arrangements for other people? Yes. And it said something about having to do this in some of Manhattan's swankiest uh, buildings. So do you put Absolutely. together the uh, plants uh, in the lobbies of buildings and in various offices all over the city? Some of what we do is that. Some of what you do is that. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of, a, do you have anything to do with the green uh, uh, movement? The idea being yes. that plants are now being put on roofs, landscaping green throughout roofs. the city. Green yes. roofs. Yes. So we you do, do that as well. That. Yes. I'm trying to remember, <laughs> there was something in a Crane's, were you in Crane's uh, New York business uh, this past year in 2010? Yes. See, I have to remind people that I actually do read it every now and again. <laughs> good were, to know. Were, you, were you cited as being one of the entrepreneurs yes. of, uh, of the year? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you have a plan. Uh, well, the time is up, but I dare say that I'm pretty close. Very close. I'm very close. Kim, you're but very I'm close. trying to think of. Uh, a fantasy, something, a, fl uh, a, pl a floral fantasy? Close, so close. I'm close. close. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm like a small shrub uh, <laughs> against a big tree. So what is the Think name green. of... green. So plant. what is the name? Plant, plant fantasy. Fantasies, and you're eh? the CEO of Plant Fantasy. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. And, um, and uh, tell me your name. <laughs> Teresa Carlio. Teresa Carlio, very nice to have you with us. All right, Thank so I you. get maybe a B or a B plus for that, do I you think? I think you did very well. Okay. <laughs> so what kind of business is it? I mean, as well, I said, this is having to do with putting in all of these landscapes and flower arrangements, uh, floral arrangements, plants right. in various Plant office fantasies, buildings. Right, we do um, commercial and residential buildings. We work mostly with owners and developers. And we offer a wide range of uh, services. So for instance, in this building, we would do the cut flowers, we would do the outside terrace, and if there was a green roof, we might do the green roof. We would also, if the executives had uh, plants in their offices, we would come and maintain them. And we also do a lot of plant maintenance uh, exterior, so we do lawns and hedges and terraces and... Well, of course, there are a lot of buildings in, in Manhattan or all over the city that they have those exterior spaces. Are you finding, though, that, uh, that the owners are changing the way they look at plants because they can be very energy efficient and they can be good for their buildings as well as just decorative? Absolutely. Business has been great. So my business has been up. Um, I think that owners and developers have wanted to maintain a certain look and style with their building and right now people are very green focused so it's very positive for us. Now I think I remember that in, in the article about you it had something to do with one of the uh, the many uh, New York uh, real estate families that you do work for um, is Bernard uh, Spitzer, Spitzer yes. uh, as the Milstein uh, family Milstein, uh, right. as well as the Maclo, uh, Maclo. Uh, organization. Trump um, organization. Now, now how did you start this business? Where did this idea come from? Um, I was out of work and I was at a turning point in my life and I always was great with plants and flowers. I grew up in Little Neck out in Long Island and I used to work with my father. We had a little, you know, little tiny garden there, but th that was something I really uh, enjoyed and spent a lot of time with him doing that. So I was at this change in my life and I took a job watering plants in office buildings for minimum wage. And it was hard to do at that point in my life because I was a little bit older. I was in my 30s. And I loved it. And I was really, really good at it. And 
and eventually I left the job I was working with and I started my own business. I had one account, $100 a month. And it all started from there. <laughs> all right, well, we're going to find out exactly how far you've gone, because okay. this is something I remember reading. It was not something that you've just started yesterday. This no, has been around um, for, a, for a, quite a while. 24 right, We're going to continue the conversation more with Teresa Carleo of Planned Fan. Alliance is we're more than one thing. This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. We're speaking to our mystery guest, a mystery no longer, uh, <laughs> Teresa Carlio of Plant Fantasies. And we were talking during the break about how, you know, you started the business, I think it was in, what, 87, yeah, 88, 87. somewhere around there. 87. And um, this is not some, this is, was not an overnight success. I mean, this mm -hmm. took a lot of perseverance. Can you give any advice or mentoring ideas for people that maybe are in, were in the same situation now that you were in, saying, all right, I'm passionate about something, I like doing something, how do you turn that into a business? Right, well, one of the things I did, I started out, I was working in my apartment, and I probably stayed there too long, I stayed there for seven years, and it was pretty depressing, because I, I wanted to work, I was very passionate about, I wanted, you know, hundreds of accounts, but I had one account a month, <laughs> so it was not, didn't fill my time very well. I, I think I, I would have left sooner. I, I shouldn't have stayed so long. I was afraid to go out and rent an office. Well, sure, because that means you're incurring an expense, and if you don't have the income that's right, coming in, right. you're not sure that you can meet the monthly expenses. Right. I, I was afraid, but I, upon retrospect, if I was going to mentor someone, I, I would suggest that they don't wait quite that long because it was rough, it was, you know. How did you get the first, how did you really get the first contract? What was that feeling uh, like and how did that happen? The first big contract I got happened to have been with Bernard Spitzer. And out of desperation, that, the way I was selling, because cold calling is very difficult, I started walking around the city. And there's a very big building that Bernard Spitzer built, which uh, is on 38th Street and 1st Avenue. And I walked in. And I really didn't know that much of what I was doing. I knew a little. And I walked in, and they had interior flowers, and a massive outdoor garden, and a pool area, and tropical plants. And they required a lot of services. And I got the contract. And it was. Were you overwhelmed? I, I mean, did you, I was, now that you had the order, I mean, what was the, I what, was how did you scared. feel? You were scared. <laughs> I was scared. I didn't know about half of the things I had to learn really quickly. It was kind of like on the job training. But I, you know, I was smart about it. I did my homework. I went, I took pieces of plants that I didn't even know the names of at the time. And I made friends out of the nurseries. And people helped me. You know, I wasn't afraid to ask questions. You can't do it alone. You've got to, you've got to include other I, people in trying to make your dreams happen. Absolutely. People are really, my crew is incredibly important to me, my team. Absolutely. How many people now at the uh, Planned Fantasies? It varies from, I would say, in the slow, like now we're securing our bids for the season and we're uh, putting on our thinking caps and trying to come up with better ideas to service our customers. Customer service is very, very important to me. So right now I probably have maybe 25 people, and then around Christmas time we could go as we've been as high as 60. And so, because you not only do the landscaping, the plants themselves, but also the decorations, the lights for certain types of displays based on the holidays. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned before, but we also do corporate Christmas decorations. So in those big lobbies. Usually they'll have maybe one or two 15-foot Christmas trees with massive wreaths and you know. Well, we're, we're showing people video of no. you quickly doing the Trump <laughs> Tower uh, Christmas it's tree great, display, right? <laughs> and it is amazing. I don't think in real life you're working that, that quickly. No. How long did the installation like that it, it take? It probably took all night. I think we start there at 10 and maybe we fit 10 p.m. because we have to wait until everybody leaves Trump sure. Tower. And it, if we get out of there at... 8 a.m. Looks a little we're, like we're Santa was there overnight, I <laughs> yes. bet, showing yes. up the next morning. Because that's what the customers want. They want to come back in the next day, and they don't want, certainly don't want to see us there. Doing the work. N absolutely not. They don't want to see the elves. At, no, they at, don't the want to see the work. elves. <laughs> now, now, you mentioned this word scared, and, and I just want to use that as a, as a segue, perhaps, this idea that not only were you scared in starting the business and fulfilling the contracts, but the customers are sometimes scared about plants. I mean, they imagine are. being scared about plants. Why is that? People are afraid they're going to kill plants. And I, I get this constantly. 
like I have this plant and it's, that the leaves are falling off and I don't know what to do with it. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to kill it. People right, in are addition afraid. to calling you, what would be like the first step? What, what's, the, what's the plant that you can't kill? Um, there's a plant called, an interior plant, for instance, called, called a zayze. A zayze. A zz zayze. It has a long botanical name, but I don't even know it right now. Um, but it is a uh, shade tolerant. Uh, plant that requires very little water so I can kind of put it anywhere because often plants are put in the wrong lighting condition and th that's frequently why they die they're they don't get, get the right kind of light they don't get the right kind of light and they don't get the right kind of water so you can start your green thumbs by getting a zayze maybe yeah that's a good idea all right, I want to thank you very much, Teresa Carlio, joining us from uh, <laughs> Plant Fantasies, uh, sharing your insights and your entrepreneurial spirit with us. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. Thank you very much for having me. All right, coming up soon at a bookstore near you, if you were on the edge of your seat during Senator Bernie Saunders of Vermont's filibuster over tax cuts, have we got the book for you. Yes, that's all next ahead on Taking Stock, right here on Bloomberg. Taking Stock is brought to you by Sector Spider ETFs. Visit them on the web at SectorSPDRS.com or call 866-SECTOR-ETF. In turbulent times, consider the